Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. Beautiful people, today I'll be speaking to Elizabeth April. She's an international psychic, spiritual teacher, and has had multiple alien abductions, human alien hybrid DNA. And today we're going to be talking about some world predictions, new ones that you haven't heard yet amongst other very cool things. Dare to Dream podcast won three talk radio Positive Change Awards, won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, Welp Magazine made Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under self-improvement under Apple Podcasts. I want to alert everybody that the membership section on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, because I know there's a lot of folks who listen to this on various podcast sites or watch this on Spotify. On YouTube, the memberships are open. I'm going to be doing some privates there. I'll be meeting with you once a month. And then also from time to time, you're going to get one of my fabulous guests to stay after so we can do some very private Q&A and you'll get to ask questions and interact. So definitely go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and sign up there. I'm Debbie Dashinger, book writing coach. I am a media visibility specialist. I help you to write a page turner book. Also, I've got a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And finally, I do some very boutique publicity work for a handful of spiritual messengers who want to get booked on way more podcasts and radio shows to increase their visibility. For those who want to get some of these skills and are new to it, I urge you to go to my website and get a gift where I teach you how. It's debbie-dashinger.com slash gift, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest is April. She is Elizabeth April, an experienced clairvoyant, truth seeker, and intuitive psychic, plus a new best-selling author dedicated to facility facilitating humanity's awakening with a wealth of media exposure. She's been featured on platforms such as Vice, Bustle, Discovery, and Gaia TV, as well as presenting at prestigious conferences across North America. Elizabeth's expertise was showcased on Unidentified with Demi Lovato, an international psychic and spiritual teacher with hundreds of thousands of followers. Her extrasensory gifts have gained popularity on her YouTube channel, her podcast, and with her best-selling book, You're Not Dying, You're Just Waking Up. Her journey with aliens started at 18 years old when she had her first alien abduction experience. Elizabeth April has a cosmic sense of what's happening in the world and why it's happening. More about her, you can go to elizabethapril.com. And with that, I welcome Elizabeth to the Dare to Dream show. It's great to have you. Thanks so much, Debbie. Great to be back. I want to ask you, because we chatted very briefly at the beginning, and I mentioned I was a contact in the desert, and it was beautiful. And I also have to say that I I don't know what happened while I was there, but I literally stopped sleeping. Mm. That's not me. And I still have very wonky sleep. And I have to say, today of all days, I I literally feel out of sorts. Whoa, welcome to my show. Good day. (laughs) But I do. And, you know, my first thought is, what is wrong with me? What's going on that would cause this? I have some friends who had said, are you think, do you have a lot on your mind? No, literally, no, nothing. And then click, I went, oh, What's happening in the cosmos? What's going on? Because something, I'm a sensitive and something is impacting me and I don't feel like I'm behind it, but I'm definitely at the effect of it. Are you aware? 
Yeah, so one of the biggest things that's hitting the planet are these huge solar flares. And of course, they bring this heightened electromagnetic frequency. We are frequency beings. And so we're getting affected by it. You know, it is increasing our vibration. Um, and then going to a conference like Contact in the Desert or Conscious Life Expo, um, I always find really kind of ungrounds me um, in and and. You know, we all want a spiritual awakening. And then when we're in the midst of it, we we want out of it because it's a very uncomfortable feeling um, to go through that. So most likely you're just going through an integration from the conference. Um, and typically it takes some time. So even this past, I think it was February at the Conscious Life Expo, you know, the whole time I was in panels and and lectures and and talking to some amazing people and I was eating eating vegan food all weekend and for probably two or three weeks afterwards I was so ungrounded I was having dizzy spells I was getting very lightheaded a little bit of vertigo um and and super exhausted And then I'm like, what do I need? Like, what's happening? And literally, it was like, eat a burger. And so <laughs> I ate a burger with love and gratitude mm -hmm. and immediately felt so much better and so grounded in my body. So sometimes it's as simple as, you know, utilizing food to help us get back in our body and integrate that knowledge, wisdom and activations that we received during that time. Mm, thank you for that. That's um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot to reflect on there and very well taken. I that aptly describes how I've been. I think also I'll step outside in the grass and put my feet in it and really yeah. root there. That'll help as well as a burger. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know once upon a time, you and I lived near each other in West Hollywood. That's a thing of the past. I moved, you moved, and you're in Nevada now. I'm yeah. really curious, why did you choose Nevada as your current home? Well, we I actually have two houses, um, one in Nevada and then one in Ontario, Canada, which is where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have like a 10 acre sort of off grid type of property here. And so I just love frolicking in my organic garden all day and, uh, you know, living off the land here. So we escape the heat in the summer, come out to Ontario. I'm Canadian, so my family's here. Um, and it's just great, you know, raising a child in this way, but then also being able to go back to civilization and have that sort of suburbia life. So a big part of what brought us to Nevada is a bunch of things. Uh, my parents actually end up uh, living there from Canada. And so we live in the same neighborhood, which was so key for us having a child. And um, and then also it's, it's um, out of California. California was getting kind of weird. Um, and also taxes are pretty insane over there. And there's no taxes in Nevada, which is nice. And if I have have to fly into LA for a conference or work, you know, it's a 45 minute flight. So it's a pretty, pretty much a no brainer. I will say that the energy of Nevada specifically around Las Vegas is, I thought I was getting away from the, um, how do I say it? Like in LA, there's like a heightened energy there just because of the huge Hollywood portal. So there's this feeling of like, you got to like work and like go, go, go. Like it's a, it's a fast paced energy. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was like leaving that going to Nevada, but I feel the same way. And I think it's the Las Vegas portal mm -hmm. that I'm around that has that quickened pace as well. Um, so it's nice to kind of get out of all of that and uh, come, you know, frolic with the fairies here and on our property. Um, what about you? Where did you move from, from West Hollywood? I got, you know, at the beginning of COVID, it became unrestful, I will say, yeah. um, empty in the streets. The civil unrest during Black Lives Matter was just yep. blocks from where I lived. Yep. And when I saw tanks and machine guns, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, complete. <laughs> so I moved to Burbank out in the valley okay. and yep. in a neighborhood. I'm in a house with my partner. It cool. is so peaceful for us and our dogs and to have a beautiful backyard and a back house that is our healing temple. And awesome. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what I needed, but I still pay the taxes <laughs> <laughs> and they are tough. I will yeah, say. They are. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for that. I was always really fascinated. Where did Elizabeth go? <laughs> she was here. 
And I know you have a really good sense of what's happening in the world today and why it's happening. And I, I like that. I like the how and the why put together. What kind of predictions or knowing do you have right now about, we just are speaking about housing. So let's go into housing as well as finances. What's mm -hmm. going to be happening or is happening around that? Yeah, I mean, we're at like a precipice right now. I think that spiritual or not, we're all feeling this buildup, this mounting energy. And I and we're at the precipice of change, right? We're in the middle of that change. I think the specifics with regard to the housing market, the financial market is really dependent on the upcoming election. Um, so that's kind of a little bit more specific. But in general, overall, we are going to see the downfall. We are going to see the collapse of the system as we know it. But upon its collapse, upon its end of that old system, we are going to see a transition to a newer system, a system that benefits all of us. So what I, you know, I, I kind of talk to my guides quite often about this because I'm like, look, if things are going to collapse, like, why do I have a mortgage? You know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of hoping that they're they're leading me into a good direction here. So um, I personally am invested, obviously, into the old system. And so I have to check in with that. Um, and then also um, part of the financial downfall and the financial collapse, one of the biggest sort of messages that I've received is, yes, it's going to happen. We don't necessarily know how it's going to happen or when it's necessarily going to happen. But um, one of the biggest recommendations that I've received is diversify your assets, right? So definitely don't have all your money in banks or, you know, um, even like stocks and bonds and, and things like that. Uh, maybe have a little bit in crypto, maybe have a little bit in precious metals, maybe have a little bit in, I, I say, even invest in some survival stuff too, right? You want to make sure you have food and water. Um, it's not a fear-based thing. It's just uh, if shit does go down, like we saw in 2020, you're not scared anymore. You're prepared, right? So, I mean, since really 2011, um, stepping into all of this, I've been very much so a prepper. Yeah, that's interesting. And that correlates directly with some things. I heard a friend sent me a YouTube video and he's a big financial guy, like he's mm -hmm. got millions. And yeah. so he sends me these videos to help me and I appreciate it. And one of the latest videos was an astrologer slash channeler. And she was saying very much the same thing, you know, and live within your means, be careful, you know, if you can't afford a house, especially in this area, but if you can't afford a house, like don't, you know, there is nothing you'll have to rely on if the banks collapse, yes. if something happens to all your money. And then I think about what you're saying and also 401ks and all the ways, the, the Roths and the ways that people have thought of retirement and saving money. Yep. You know, I can tell you, they don't go up. <laughs> They're they just eke up in a way that by the time someone retires, there's not ample money there. Yeah, actually, uh, my wife did something so smart and uh, she converted her Roth IRA into gold. So it's not just gold that's being held somewhere and you have a piece of paper that says you have this gold. Like she literally got the gold sent to her. We have it in our possession um, so, I mean, precious metals is something that I highly believe in. Um, I'm actually more of a believer in silver than gold, specifically because it's uh, it's way more affordable. And silver is in every single piece of technology. Um, we need it. We need it more now than ever before. Uh, we cannot reproduce it. And I think it's highly undervalued. So that's something that is very easy to invest in. Mm, yep. Great idea. I've also heard about silver and um, I am getting ready to do all of this. So I am very interested in it. And I've heard you on your videos, Elizabeth, you've said 2024 is a transition year. Yes. And I know I don't want to give away because your videos are amazing just the way they are. But if this, that we're 
halfway through at this point. Mm -hmm. I think the one I heard was an older one you did in January and you predicted a lot of unrest and uh, I know we're living that out. So what can we be aware of going forward, especially regarding natural phenomenon like eclipses, like earthquakes, like solar flares that you mentioned earlier? Are there more Mm -hmm. to come and what will the result be of them? Yep. So back in 2016 or 2017, I was given the timeline of 2020 to 2024, right? And it was interesting because I told my family at the time, I said, 2020 is going to change the world forever back in 2017. And my aunt, who really never believed in my abilities, um, she's like, yeah, okay, like you're crazy. Like, and she's like, I remember going to bed thinking like, what is she talking about 2020? And then 2020 happened and she became a believer, um, which was which was nice, but also like under sad context. Um, so 2020 to 2024 has always been the cycle of the collapse, the downfall of the third dimension or the old world, right? And in order for that collapse to happen, people need to wake up to the reality that we've all been living in. The reality has not changed, but we need to finally see it for what it is. And I really think that 2020 took everyone out of their nine to fives and it helped people question. It gave people the time, the capacity to say, do I really trust the government? Am I really happy? You know, do I really like my job? Could I be doing something differently? And so there was a lot of change and transition that happened during that period. And then there's another timeline that I've received at the same time in 2017, which was 2024 to 2028. This is the timeline of choice, all right? So essentially we need to be aware of that old earth frequency. And then during this four year period, we then need to see both sides. Do we choose separation and greed and control and power dynamics and feeding that 1%, feeding the fear? Or do we choose unity and love and and choosing leaders who can, you know, really help the collective and not just help themselves, right? Who are we going to feed? And so this is the time of the great reveal. And even halfway through last year, 2023, I woke up at 3 a.m. and I and I got this message. And the message was about 2024. And the message is all that is hidden will be revealed. This is the great reveal. Um, And so over the next couple of years, we are revealing everything that has been hidden both individually, which means ego deaths and health crises and financial issues and work stuff all coming up because we have to get to a place of a higher vibration, right? We have to get to a place of authentic connection. And a lot of people, especially outside of the spiritual community, have not been living in their authentic truth. And so this is the time to really see what isn't aligned, what isn't harmonious, and to shift into that alignment. So a lot of shifts are happening individually. And then, of course, collectively, right? We, we're seeing more corruption coming out. We're seeing things like trafficking uh, getting exposed. Like people are finally waking up to the realities of this world. And, and upon seeing it for what it is, we then have to make a choice. Do we Do we choose that separation or do we choose unity? Do we choose fear? Do we choose love? And hopefully collectively we can make that choice by the end of 2028 and then real solutions can get established. So I have to say it's going to get worse before it gets better. We're going to see more environmental um, catastrophes. um, And and a big part of that is, yes, the solar flares are a part of that, um, but also we are shifting our poles, which as much as we can say it's climate change, it's actually an electromagnetic shift, which happens naturally. It's a cycle that happens on planet Earth. And when the poles shift, um, things like flooding and fires and earthquakes and volcano eruptions and all of that also happened. Um, And so, you know, you know, Antarctica used to be a tropical jungle, right? And so we're, we've had that before. And that's where the poles were in different places. And this is what I really truly believe that we're going through. And this is why understanding the potential possibilities and preparing for those potential possibilities is just a really smart idea at this time. Um, And so, yeah, so I think it will get better, but it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. I usually I'll get somebody who writes this 
um, under comments on YouTube. So I want to ask you if you can explain to the audience. So what exactly is a solar flare and what is our relationship to it? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not an astrophysicist. <laughs> it's not my forte. Um, so there's a couple of things. So uh, essentially um, we are at a solar maximum, right? So the sun goes through different phases as well. Um, and we're talking like thousands of years or even millions of years of, of just phases. And so right now the sun is more active than it's ever been before. And so with this active sun, you can kind of think of like a volcano, right? And like, it, it's like bubbling and popping and, you know, eventually the volcano gets more active and bigger, bigger splashes, bigger bubbles, bigger bursts of, of uh, lava come out. But then also with that burst, it's also an energetic burst, right? So that's kind of what the sun is doing right now. Like there's all these like bursts of, of, of whatever that the sun is made of, but mostly it's, it's energy. And that energy will ripple from the sun and it will hit at the planet. And so we have our atmospheric uh, layer and that atmospheric layer protects us from a lot of the solar flares. Um, of course, we've got a huge hole in our atmospheric layer right now. So the solar flares are hitting us um, and it's increasing our electromagnetic field. And this is where we see the aurora borealis all over the planet in very odd places uh, because of these solar flares, right? So we, we can scientifically track this. We can also track what's called the Schumann resonance, which is sort of the frequency of the planet. And that's also been increasing, which is being affected by the solar flares. Because we're energy beings at more of a spiritual level, it is increasing our vibration, increasing our consciousness. It's allowing us to be more psychic. It's glitching out things like technology and also time and space and our reality and like making things a little bit weird. But then also at a physiological level, it's helping us to purge out the toxins in our body, right? So a lot of people, they're getting brain fog. They're having problems with even like language and speech. They're having problems sleeping. Their anxiety is heightened. Um, headaches are a very common symptom. Getting dehydrated is a common symptom. Even people with flu-like symptoms and even um, like getting random food poisoning, right? I've had so many people get random quote unquote food poisoning uh, during the time of a huge X-class solar flare. So essentially that's what it is and that's how it's affecting us. And we're only going to see an increasing amount of these solar flares. So there's nothing that we could really do to be prepared for them other than just living our truth and following what's in alignment. Um, and, and of course, things like just eating a little bit better and exercising more and, and sort of just aligning to a bit of a healthier lifestyle can also help. Mm -hmm. And in that timeline that you've been given privy to in this 2024 to 2028, have they mentioned anything about the arrival? I don't know how to say this outside of very pedestrian 3D <laughs> earth being terms, but I mean something much bigger when I say undeniable first open contact. I mean, to a point where I suppose anyone who is on that timeline <clears throat> would be um, aligned with that, whether they believe or not, but that it will finally be put to rest that yes, they are here. Yes, they exist. Yes, the ones arriving, if I can call it arriving, um, because they don't arrive there, right? They go through portals and they energetically appear and so forth. I believe that they're going to be benevolent. Have you gotten any kind of information along those lines? Absolutely. So, yeah. So there's like two different kinds of contact. There's individual contact and then there's collective contact. And so right now you don't have to wait for contact to happen, right? You can call it in. And a lot of the time contact happens at an individual level when we're ready for it. So there's people who are begging for contact, looking into the stars saying, you've got to be out there. I'm ready for you. Please just abduct me, take me home. Uh, and then you've got people who have no idea, don't even believe in it, and they get contacted, right? It's got to be the right timing that aligns to their consciousness. I mean, Every sort of experience we have, whether it be positive or negative, is is contracted. It's meant to happen at that time because it, it truly is life changing to have an experience like that, to really open that can of worms up, whether you believe or not, and say, wow, there really is something else out there. 
So individual contact is happening now more so than ever before, which is really exciting um, to the people who are ready for it. Collective contact, which is what you're referring to, um, it is it is in the works right now. And so we've had even like the Mexican government come out with the, the aliens and, you know, things are sort of trickling. Now, the reason why governments are starting to get on top of it and talk about it a little bit more is because they want to control the narrative. They know at a deep level that it's going to happen no matter what. And if they don't start controlling that, that narrative now and planting those seeds, um, then it's going to it's gonna have a mind of its own, right? And they're worried about that. I mean, even look at the the Pope and the Vatican, right? Talking about it. I actually don't know what they, the Pope said in that conference, but um, I'm hoping that it was something positive. But once again, they're trying to get ahead of this. They're trying to control the narrative. It's like basically getting on top of it at a PR standpoint. Um, the collective disclosure is going to happen. There is a bit of a timeline here for it. Uh, recently, I heard from the Galactic Federation that around 2030 to 2035 is when sort of the huge collective disclosure is meant to happen. And then that enters us into this galactic age where we get to have open conversation and also open technology transfer with different interdimensional beings. Um, and then that's going to really elevate us to a whole other level. And when I recently asked them, why isn't collective disclosure happening now? They said, you as a civilization are still choosing fear. You're still choosing to war each other mm -hmm. over belief. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't accept each other as the same, then how can you accept an eight foot tall, weird looking being coming to planet Earth saying, you know, we're, we're here to help you. So we, we have to get to a point of unity together before they come down and yeah, and, and I'm a big believer that there are benevolent and malevolent beings out there. I, I definitely don't think that there's just one or the other, just like we have really good and not so great humans here on planet Earth. We have to realize that there are many species. They all have their own agendas. And part of my mission is to give people the right information about extraterrestrials to empower them. So it's not a scary thing when disclosure does happen, whether it be individually or collectively. Yeah. Thank you for saying all that. You know, I'm interviewed a lot about uh, shamanism and extraterrestrials because I believe there's a deep connection. And so I, I, the first thing to say about that is it's very weird when we get to the point in the interview and the person says to me, well, so what's the solution? It's like, beautiful. There is a solution. And I'll tell you, the shamans, the indigenous have been living like this since the beginning of time. These are people who have been, you know, really put down and dismissed, but they've always had the secret. They connect with the earth. They speak to the sky and the mountains. They have reverence. They mm -hmm. also have had a relationship with extraterrestrials since the beginning of time. So truly, what's the answer? Being one, being knowing that everything, you can't just say, energy is everything. And then, oh, that applies to the cactus and my meal. It's like, no, it's everything. And at the mm -hmm. same time, it just sounds like, you know, this old kind of talk. And and I don't know if people can grok the, the depth of it and the importance of it that I feel they are waiting very lovingly, the, the benevolent ones waiting very patiently, very lovingly, you know, for humans to at least ascend somewhat collectively so that they can come down and spend time with us and invite us in. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it is a vibrational thing, you know, right now, I, I truly believe that um, there have been different species interacting with us, the malevolent ones, um, such as the reptilians, you know, and I think in a lot of ways, they've been sort of manipulated us we've been falling into their trap and and we've been vibrating at their level at their frequency and so you know we have to realize that we have to raise our, our frequency before the higher vibrational ones can interact with us and that's why i think some people can see them and some people cannot see them because it's a vibrational thing it's a frequency thing and i think that you know i say this often but one day I hope that I'm just out of a job because I'm no longer the conduit. I'm no longer the channeler. I'm 
I, everyone can do what I do and everyone has access to the same information. And I will definitely be popping some champagne on that day because that's, that's, I think what we're all here to do is to empower each other to get to this place where we can all see that unity rise collectively and choose peace over fear and war. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have a question for you because this is something I think about and I'd love to hear your feeling on it. As metaphysicians, we are taught the edict that as you think or believe, so you create. Your world essentially is a reflection of your inside world. And I've always been curious. So for people who have very negative abduction experiences or very negative, sometimes paranormal and or alien or extraterrestrial experiences. And then there's others who have had only very friendly, benevolent, loving, you know, beings of light kind of thing. Do you think at all that sometimes this is an illusion and it's based on our beliefs and expectations? How do we break down the malevol malevolent, benevolent, et cetera, the Bs and the Ms and mm -hmm. I can only say, for instance, I've only thus far had very kind, loving relations with extraterrestrials, whether in dreams or otherwise, which I'm super grateful for. But I love your take on this. Yeah, I do have a take on this, actually. So mm -hmm. I think it's less to do about our beliefs and expectations, although I'm a firm believer that what we focus on, we create, right? You know, we create our own reality. That being said, I truly believe that a lot of old souls, a lot of star seeds, right? A lot of individuals who have been on this planet for a while, we need to experience the darkness in order to choose the light. And so my first ever abduction experience before I even believed, knew, or thought about aliens was super negative. It was very fear-based. It was extremely scary. It didn't have to be, you know, but those were the beings that took me. They were like the bad ones. And um, and I realize now that I contracted, I, I chose to have that experience so that I can have compassion around all of the individuals who have only negative experiences, right? So for me, part of it is I have to experience both sides of this dualistic reality in order to be able to help with both sides. You know, it's the same thing during a spiritual awakening, right? It's not all love, light, and butterflies and Pleiadians and angels. Um, a lot of the time we get psychically attacked. We get hit hard. We get an anxious and depressed and intrusive thoughts and all of that. And I had all of that for many years. And I know a lot of other people, that's a huge phase of their awakening is these psychic attacks. And I believe that we have to understand the darkness in order to know how to navigate both realms, both sides. And I'll give you a quick story for anyone out there who is suffering from psychic attacks or you know, some darkness along your journey. Uh, it was about four years where I was super interested in, I was remote viewing military bases and reptilians and shapeshifters and all about conspiracies and agendas. And that's that was my focus and governments corrupt and all of that. And I was getting psychically attacked left, right and center. And as to your point, I was focusing on that world and that's the world I was in and that's the world I was fighting and battling. And I would use all of my tools. I would, you know, put invisibility cloaks and use light weapons. And I would be battling and fighting these entities all night long for, for four years. I was in that realm, in that world. And then one night I, I thought to myself, there's got to be a different way. There's got to be a better way. Like this just keeps happening. You know, I can't do this perpetually. And so um, I was getting psychically attacked that night. And I ended up in this sort of like a, a hell like landscape. It was just like a red room, an infinite red room. And there was these three eight foot tall shadowy beings that were just chasing me. And I had so much fear in the dream. And I was lucid dreaming at that point pretty much every night. So I was fully aware of this sort of dreamscape that I was in. And I was so scared, running, running, running. And halfway through this dream, I thought to myself, what if I don't run? What if I stop running? What if I actually confront them with love? And I was able to find the courage to stop running and they stopped and I turn around and I face them 
And the darkest, meanest one was like right in the middle. And I said, I love you. And I said, come here, let me give you a hug. And it was interesting. So I stretch out my arms. I wrap this middle one in my arms for a hug. And I started feeling this gratitude, this appreciation, this love, this unconditional love filling me up. And immediately the being started to basically try and bring my vibration down. Um, it started like stabbing my back and doing some like really weird, like sort of the intrusive thought type of things, right? The attack. Uh, but I didn't let it get to me. And I said, no, I love you. I love you. And I truly felt love for the darkness in that moment of, wow, you are a, por a part, a piece of divinity. You know, you are a piece of this universe. And, and I am so grateful that you are half of this whole. Mm -hmm. And immediately when I just, when I anchored into that frequency, this being just burst into like a billion little pieces and it transmuted into the light. Um, I was able to transmute it. And since then, um, yes, I've had psychic attacks here and there throughout the past, you know, 10 years, but it was nothing like it was back then. And um, immediately I know the tools to navigate, but I really just don't encounter that sort of stuff anymore because all I know is you love and appreciate that side um, mm -hmm. as, as part of the, the grand landscape. I mean, even the reptilians, even the Anunnaki, even the bad extraterrestrials out there, they are all a piece of the whole. And, um, and I really do truly feel grateful for it. And, and a lot of people think that that's messed up, that I, I think that way. Um, but I, yeah, they're like, how could you, EA, how could you think that the reptilians are actually beautiful? And uh, they, they're just not there yet. And that's okay, because I wasn't there for a long time either. Um, but that's how I was able to transmute any of my fear towards that side. And luckily, it doesn't trigger me anymore. And I don't usually have to confront it or fight it anymore either. Yes, absolutely. Um Oh, that was such a great story. I love how it ended up. And I love how empowered you became through love and how mm -hmm. disengaged from this negative, dark energy, the moment you shifted to love, it couldn't vibrate there. So poof. Yeah. And it, concurrently uh, and going the other direction, then do you have a favorite extraterrestrial, a favorite otherworldly, other dimensional being that you have developed over the decades, a specific relationship that you really look forward to? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a self of mine that is a tall gray. Um, that's a past life of mine that I feel very connected to just because I was him when I chose to be me in this mm -hmm. life. So I have a strong sort of correlation with that being. Um, and then I have a future self of mine that I feel very connected with, um, who's a mantis being. So I love both of those sort of parts, you know, parallels of myself. Um, but the species that I mainly connect with to receive information, both individually for me and collectively for the planet are the Pleiadians. Um, of course, who can't love the Pleiadians? They're absolutely incredible. So loving, so kind, so knowledgeable, such strong leaders. They really do have, you know, both the masculine and the feminine uh, balance within them. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I love that it's your future, past, concurrent selves. Really mm -hmm. powerful to draw on that. And um, yeah. okay, so with the existence of malevolent forces, there are then others who speak about white hats right now. And these are really good leaders who are working for global unity. Can you elaborate somewhat on the white hats and their roles? And I'm also going to add an addendum here. I also had, I just pay attention to what people write. And I, I know people are hungry for this. And, and somebody once wrote um, several episodes ago, what's a white hat? And I thought, oh, you know, I did my best, but I'd love to hear your take and then how these white hats are helping us globally right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't love the term white hats. I don't know why. It just doesn't fully resonate with me, but I also have been having a hard time finding a different word for them. So there is a group of individuals on the planet who are sort of these like seeds that have been planted here. I actually believe that there are multiple groups sort of working independently, but also with the same goal on planet Earth, who are all 
considered these white hats. Essentially, it's just um, individuals who are coming together. So an organization, sort of like we have the shadow government, um, it's the same thing, but for the working for the good. And um, some of them are fully aware of what their mission is. A lot of them are playing this game. So they're pretending like they're a part of the darker agendas. And then they're just waiting for this switch to happen so that they can take action on the higher frequencies. So a lot of them are just sort of behind the scenes right now, um, waiting for that, that movement, that action. And, uh, and like I said, there's many different sort of factors actions, many different groups. And there's also a lot of them that are in high ranking positions, whether that be politically or within the celebrity space or what have you. Um, and they're actually not awakened yet. So I call them the sleeper star seeds. And so they ha have come here for a mission. They're here for the good side. They're not aware of it yet. And there will be something in their life that triggers them into understanding, better understanding that mission. And then they can really switch things over and start working with the good side. Kind of reminds me of a little bit of Jim Carrey, you know, I mean, he kind of made that transition uh, quite a few years ago and, um, you know, called out the Illuminati and a lot of things like that. So, uh, you know, that's a good example. And he was a little bit before his time on that one. But we're going to start seeing this more and more. We're going to start seeing the call out of the shadow government. And then we're also simultaneously going to start seeing really beautiful, authentic, real grounded people who have done their own work, really taking those leadership positions and helping to change the mainstream mindset. Have you, can you give an example of somebody that you know of, office, celebrity, whatever, I'm going to call them a light hat instead of a white hat. So who's, <laughs> like a, who's a light hat, who cool. is actually looking to be of a dark force, but just waiting for the time when they can submerge and come back up mm -hmm. as light. Yeah. So I have two in mind right now, actually, and I can't for sure well, one I know for sure. The other is like a really big question mark. So one of them is Elon Musk. Um, he's kind of always been a big question mark in my mind. So he's definitely an alien, definitely of extraterrestrial origins, definitely here um, with the mission of propelling humanity forward. I mean, come on, like just objectively look at what he's doing. Um, you know, he's he's not necessarily the most empathic human. And he's not necessarily, you know, but he's, I don't think he's also necessarily too corrupt. So when I take a look at his soul contracts, he has a choice to make, right? He's, he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of power. He's got a lot of control. He's got a lot of in, insane, but also great ideas. And there's, there's such a fine line with Elon Musk of he could so easily descend into the dark side and he can so easily rise up to that higher vibration. And you know, last I checked in with his contracts, which was probably within the past year, he hasn't yet made a choice, right? That's what it feels like. He hasn't necessarily made a choice. He's been able to go about this world independently, which is, that says everything when we take a look at, you know, factions like the Illuminati of, you know, they will propel you to that place if you do their bidding. But Elon Musk said, no, I'm going to do this myself, which is really incredible and, and honorable. So that's someone who is like totally on the fence. I still don't know which way he's going to necessarily take um, take that. So the other individual who I channeled quite recently is Taylor Swift. And she's very fascinating because just on the and you know, I'd, I'm I'm so outside of pop culture. I'm so outside of politics. I just really do not subscribe to any of the, the matrixy things. Uh, I really don't, I just couldn't care less. Um, with Taylor Swift, right? Like on the outside, her music is like poppy and fun and like kids love her. And like, it's about like romance and like kind of like just lighthearted concepts, right? Um, but, you know, she is an extraordinarily influential individual. And I truly believe that she did uh, sign those Illuminati contracts way back in the day. And that she is under their control. Um, so I do believe that there's a darker side to her. That being said, when I remote viewed her, which was a couple months ago, I was pretty surprised. Like I said, totally objective, had no idea what I was going to find. And um, she had some, so they're kind of like energetic handlers that I see with people who have signed over, not necessarily signed your soul over because you can't do that, but it's more so signing your body over. 
Um, but she signed those contracts and then there was like these entities, right, that were sort of attached to her and around her, which I typically see around individuals like that. So that didn't surprise me. However, it was so interesting. There was this really beautiful, literally a silver lining of energy around her aura, which I really have never seen with a celebrity before. And when I took a look at her soul contracts, and just a side note, um, I never look at anyone if I don't get their higher self permission. So every once in a while, I will take a look at someone like that, and I will not get permission from their higher self. And then I just, I have no information on them. So I just don't talk about them. So just know that I do everything with permission. And I'm very sort of um, morally sound in that way. That's really important for me. So when I did take a look at her aura, there was this sort of white light, this silver lining, and the contracts came through as she could potentially be a double agent is the information that came through of she's playing the side of the Illuminati. She's building up her audience, but she could absolutely one day be a whistleblower mm -hmm. and just call it all out, mm -hmm. um, which I think would be absolutely profound for the mainstream. So I think that there is still hope for uh, for someone like Taylor Swift. Wow, those are amazing examples. The first one really makes sense. The second one is very surprising. I have been mm -hmm. contacted three times by, this is the first time I've ever said this in public and it's the last time I'll ever say it. I don't wanna give it energy, but um, I have been contacted three times by the Illuminati. And for anyone who's been curious about that, I will just say that the way I've been approached um, you are offered riches and positions beyond your wildest dreams. And so, you know, my episode on Gaia TV is airing actually in a couple of days on George Nori's show. But what if I wanted my own show there, or my own show on NBC or my own, you know, <laughs> galactic whatever? I mean, I have no doubt they could provide my heart's greatest desires. You know, I want a singing contract and all sorts of stuff. But um, there's an energy too to the approach. And if you're at all sensitive, and I am, it was so dark. It was so dark. I had to do some processes to release some stuff and just woof, you know, unattached yeah. completely. So it's real. It is real. Wow. Okay. And so the Galactic Federation, by the way, you said something earlier, and I'm still curious about it. Do you channel the mantis? Yeah, I mean, I can channel any uh, interdimensional being. That's huge. Okay. I have people who are asking about that. They've never heard a mantis channel. So there's desire for that out there. Um, the Galactic. So I will just say. Yeah. Yeah. There's um there there's an episode on Gaia TV that's uh called interview uh interviews with Ed so E D interviews with inter extraterrestrials or extra dimensional Ruben Langdon yeah with Ruben Langdon mm -hmm. love that guy by the way mm -hmm. anyway so I actually I have three episodes with his season I think it's season two and one of the episodes is purely me just channeling my tall gray self and then the other episode is purely just me channeling the mantis being um on so definitely check that out if you're interested in mantis channeling because i don't usually tune into the mantis especially even in my galactic federation summits they don't come through too often they don't usually have a whole lot to say to us hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for that. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to let the folks in the audience know. Um, so Galactic Federation, you have been involved with them for decades. And is there help that they're supplying us right now? What are they focusing on? What are they aware of? Yeah, absolutely. So they're aware of everything that's going on, all the agendas, the, the, the dark things, the timelines, the contracts. I mean, it's pretty, it's, pretty overwhelming the knowledge that they have, uh, mm -hmm. which is obviously why they're a really great resource to go to. Not to mention they're very objective and they do abide by the laws of the universe. So um, yeah, so that's, that's who I go to for mostly a lot of my information anyway. And right now they are working with different strategies and tactics on how to best support us at this time without, um, without uh, go like, D not destroying but without like 
with abiding by the laws of the universe, essentially, yeah. right? So one of the big laws is the law of non-intervention. And so just the other day, I forget if it was in meditation or in the middle of the night. I want to say it was in, I don't know. I think it might've been in the middle of the night, but I would, oh, yeah, it was, it was in the middle of the night. I was in um, one of their meetings. So I go up often, but a lot of the time I don't remember, especially at night when they're put it, pulling me into meetings. But this time in particular, I remember, and the meeting was about um, what, what do we do? How do we help best help humanity? And so one of their strategies, like, thousands of years ago, right, during the time of Atlantis and Lymeria was to take the galactic souls to have them be volunteers to incarnate into human bodies, because they couldn't do much um, from where they were, because they would be, um, you know, not abiding by the law of non-intervention, right? So uh, it was really important that if they incarnate as humans and help us from that standpoint, mm -hmm. then they're abiding by all of the laws. So just the other day, they were talking about, this is so fascinating, uh, one of their strategies is to take these galactic souls, these super high vibrational interdimensional beings, and incarnate as different creatures on the planet, on planet Earth. So we're talking insects, we're talking butterflies and squirrels and bunnies and whatever. And so they were, they were talking about like the lifespan of these critters and creatures and insects are so, so small, so short, but the vibrate, they could help increase the vibration just by incarnating into these creatures for that short period of time. And I said, that is absolutely brilliant. So we were talking about that in a council meeting just a couple of nights ago. And I thought that was such a great strategy because right now we have a lineup of galactic beings who all want to volunteer to be human and make really big impacts on planet Earth. Uh, but the ones who don't necessarily want to say or do a whole lot, um, the ones who are sort of still waiting to be a human uh, can cut, still come in um, as different sort of animals and still help the vibration that way just by being here. Oh my, that was most unexpected. And that's very clever, isn't it? Because these are short lived right, yeah. lives, but they can still have a lot of impact while they're here and probably have fun being these various yeah. creatures. <laughs> uh, and what is it like, what's going on for you right now? What's happening for you and, you know, information wise or where you're headed wise or things you feel like people should really know about right now? Yeah. Okay. So for me personally, 2024 has been the craziest year energetically, emotionally, like probably, well, I mean, I've had some pretty crazy times, but it's been really intense for me. And I've done a lot of work, like a lot of work for a long time. And I can only imagine what people who have not done any work, what they're experiencing right now, right? So luckily my foundations are set, but I, I joke with my friends and family saying I've had 10 ego deaths and it's two months into this year, right? Like it, it's just been back to back of just internal things, anything internally for me that is not fully aligned, fully harmonic is just crumbling or I'm seeing it head on. And luckily I have the tools. I'm willing to show up. I have the courage to do the work for myself. And I think that's so important. And I've been so vulnerable with my community in saying, I can't always be the teacher. I can't always be the leader. And in this moment, I need to be the student, you know? So I've really been stepping into that role and being so vulnerable and just raw, I think, in 2024 personally, uh, on top of all of the sort of physical symptoms, weird pains in the body, headaches, vertigo, things like that. Um, so that's just at a personal level. At a collective level, the message that I keep getting, the thing that is the most important thing that, that everyone just realize and take action on is that this is the time, right? It is no longer a time of settling. It is no longer a time of just letting things go. It's no longer a time of being complacent. It's no longer a time of just, um, you know, choosing to be blissfully ignorant. This is a time to listen. This is a time to take action. This is a time to step into your greatest, highest possible timeline mm -hmm. and to finally say yes yes to the life that you've always wanted to live this is a time that we're all realizing our greatest gift and our greatest truth and stepping into that teacher role really putting yourself into the driver's seat of the car rather than the passenger seat so the, it, it's time 2024 is the year um it's time to take action it's time to step in it's time to start living your best possible life and on top of that 
It's not about just wanting to connect with extraterrestrials. It's not about connecting with your spirit guides. It's not about going to higher dimensions and realms. It's actually about figuring out your physical human foundations first. If you can't pay the bills, focus on that first. You can never help heal the world or access your spirit guides if you're still stuck in survival. So figure out the 3D. And the, the easiest way that I tell people to know if you're in harmony or not in harmony in your physical reality is if you think about it, the things that are in alignment in your life, life, you never have to question. You never have to think about. If you do think about that thing, it's only for the gratitude. When I think about my career, I never question, am I doing the right thing? Am I giving enough? Am I this? It's always, wow, I can't believe I get to wake up every day and do this for a living. Like this is incredible, right? Anything that you're questioning, anything that you're thinking about often, or you have anxiety around, most likely there's something within that relationship. There's something within that career. There's something within your house or your car that is actually just not aligned. And it's okay to ask for a better aligned vehicle to get you to the places where you want to go, right? So make sure that your physical reality is in full harmonic alignment for First and foremost, before you start giving to others or raising your vibration to talk to your guides and access your clairs. Mm, thank you. Wow. That's a, that is a call. That's a putting down the gauntlet for a lot of people who probably have dreams out there and have been procrastinating, fully stepping into creation and uh, beautifully said, what about your book? I mean, last time you were on this show, you were conceiving your book and now you've not only given birth to a child, you've given birth to your book. Tell us about the book. Yeah. And it's interesting because the book is just more, it's getting more and more relevant as we move along in this process. Um, it's called, you're not dying. You're just waking up. And it truly is all of the stages that we go through upon our spiritual awakening um, you know, it starts with anxiety and fears and being blissfully ignorant and then the ego deaths and and then stepping into your mission and exploring all the modalities. And then it goes into aliens and and, uh, you know, what hybrid you know species you could relate to in your mission work and then a little bit of quantum physics. And it really does just overview everything. It's in Audible as well. Um, and I'm currently working on three books, as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> I know. So 2025, I'm hoping to release two of them. One is going to be traditionally published, and then the other is going to be self-published. Um, one, the working title is Cosmic Conversations. Terrible title, but I don't, it hasn't come to me yet. And it's essentially me having one-on-one -on -one conversations with different extraterrestrial beings talking about um, different tools, different, um, you know, pieces of advice and information for humanity, and also talking to them. Who are you? What do you do for a living? What do you look like? Uh, which is really cool. So that's going to be the self-published one. That's really just for my own audience and community. Um, and then my other one is, um, it's called uh, your anxiety is giving me anxiety. And that is the, wow, that's, <laughs> that's going to be the traditionally published one. Uh, so we're currently sort of, I'm working with a literary agent, you know, pitching that out to publishers. And um, I just feel like everyone is so anxious all the time. We don't even know what anxiety is. We don't know how to work with it, how to heal it, where it comes from. And so I have gotten so many downloads on really what it is, why it happens, and how we can work with it as a superpower rather than as something to um, to fear. So it, that's a mainstream book. I don't talk about aliens, and I think it needs to be in the lap of everyone, parents who have kids with anxiety, you know, teenagers, um, social workers, right? Healthcare workers. I think it's just a very different approach to anxiety. And me as a chronic anxiety sufferer, I think a lot of old souls and star seeds also deal with anxiety on a daily basis and just don't really have all the tools to navigate it. Wow. I, I would, <laughs> I would read both of those books and be fascinated by each of those yeah. subjects and especially because they're coming from you. So it wouldn't be very pedestrian and, and the usual stuff I see out there. That's great. Congratulations on you giving birth 
to your projects and anything else, any other dare to dreams that you haven't created yet. I'm not saying that's not enough, but just curious if there's <laughs> anything else. Like, I don't know, I keep getting a weird download for you about being on a new platform. Hmm? Anything there? Yeah. Yeah. So there's some TV stuff going on. I just pitched my own show. Um, there's like a mainstream show and then there's more of like a spiritual show. So I'm in the works with both of them. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but uh, I, I am starting a foundation and that's in the works, but it's probably still maybe a couple years away. It's called the Elizabeth April Foundation. And my biggest thing is like just boots on the ground. How can I give back? What are the parts of society that need the most help? And I would say a couple of the um, the things I want to really fo focus on are um, in the indigenous communities. I feel like there is so much knowledge that is lost because their living conditions are absolutely deplorable, right? I mean, they don't even have access to clean drinking water on these reservations. And this is like, this is in our backyard. So for me, I really just want to be able to help them and support them with access to basic needs. Um, so that's a huge passion of mine. And then also um, trafficking. I don't want to say it because I don't want you to get banned, but um, that's a really big passion of mine as well. Like, let's bring these organizations down. Let's help the victims. Let's get them back on their feet, um, those sort of things. And then another project within the foundation that I feel very passionate about is which is, I think it's a past life thing, but individuals who are leaving um, extreme religious groups or cults, you know, it's like that organization, they, they work, they live, they exist, their friends, their family, everything, you know, when they leave an organization like that, they, they have nothing. Yes. So how can we better provide to them to, to sort of mm -hmm. anchor them out of that um, and help heal from a situation like that? So those are sort of my three biggest passions. Um, and that's sort of where I want to uh, provide resources to. So that's that's a seed I'm planting in the works. And I have to keep reminding myself that I do have time and I'm still young, but it does feel like there's so much to do uh, on this planet and and not enough time and resources to do it all. Is your baby displaying any gifts yet? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So uh, we just in the last week, we went from Nevada to Ontario to our property and we're surrounded by elementals. Right. So fairies and gnomes. And uh, it's so funny. He's been so he's just over a year, but he's been pointing at nothing. OK. And waving. He's like pointing and waving. And I I can see them. And he's pointing at all the fairy beings that he sees. So yeah, he's 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 such an, an old man in a young body. He is very, very serious. He will stare into your soul. You know, most babies his age are very, they're giggly and happy. And, and he's just like, Mom, like, what am I doing here? Why did you put me on this planet? You know, so um, yeah, he's he's such a chill child, you know, but very serious, very old man vibes for sure from him. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you. I really am for all the things you've created since we first met. And here you are. It just feels like at the pre precipice of even more and even more. I'm totally getting the platform very strongly for you. So, um, but I know you will align with what's the cleanest avenue mm. for your message. Yes. I think it's great. I'll just say, because of what I'm getting, I do think it's great because you have information that people really desire to hear. And I know when I woke, I mean, I was awake when I was born and very spiritual, mm -hmm. but the whole extraterrestrial thing, uh, no, I was very <laughs> skeptical and a big eye roller. And when I woke, there was so much information for me many years ago. And I'm so grateful to all the people who gave and gave and and it helped me tremendously in the beginning on my path. So I feel like you're going to be one of those too. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came on the show. And so folks, if you'd like to reach her and find out more and all the beautiful things she does, you can go to her YouTube channel. And also her website is elizabethapril.com. And a little note here that June 12th, I will be featured on George Norrie's Beyond Belief on Gaia TV. 
if you don't have a subscription, don't let that put you off because they do offer free trials and it's an amazing platform. So George Norrie's Beyond Belief, I will be featured talking about extraterrestrials and shamanism. So you can tune in with me and George. And I end today's show with this quote from Nikola Tesla. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream Show with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, please, and share. It helps our algorithms and other people who need to hear this to find the show. Next week in the program, I'm going to be featuring the amazing Debbie Solaris. She'll be back. I think it's her third time back. She is an ET contactee, an interdimensional traveler, and a galactic historian. And folks, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. Remember what Elizabeth shared. This is the year not to sit on the fence, but to go ahead and do it. Thanks for joining us.